as we continue learning about animals, the uh, next most um, developed or most advanced type of animal would be some of the worms. Okay, the first group we'll talk about is the platyhelminthes, the flatworms. Okay, platyhelminthes uh, are, for, are, are flatworms. There, um, there are lots of different species. Some live in the ocean, some live in fresh water. Some of them are parasites, and so we'll find lots of different kinds of things in this phylum. The platyhelminthes are acelomates, meaning they do not have a body cavity, and they're triploblastic. We now have an animal that has all three tissue layers, the mesoderm, ectoderm, and endoderm. For digestion, similar to what we saw in the nideria, they have a gastrovascular cavity. They don't really have a circulatory system. They depend on diffusion to take care of distributing their uh, nutrients and getting rid of their waste. Since they all live in wet environments, it's relatively, and they're, since, since they're very small and very thin, uh, it's relatively easy to get rid of their waste to the outside of the body. In the phylum platyhelminthes, we see the first evidence of cephalization. Cephalization is the development of a head region. It is defined as the concentration of nerve endings and sense organs toward the anterior or front end of the organism. Flatworms don't have a brain. They do have ganglia, which are masses of nerve cells, and they kind of organize into a simple brain, but no real brain-like organization. And they have nerve cords running along their body, running along the length of their body to help control movement. They're hermaphroditic, meaning they have both genders, both, uh, both sex organs in the same body. They have ovaries and they have testes, producing eggs and sperm. And as we discussed earlier, this is a benefit to animals that live a relatively solitary existence because any time they come across another member of their species, they're able to exchange gametes with them. This is a typical platyhelminth. This is, this is an animal called a planaria. They're pretty small. They live in fresh water. <clears throat> They're about a half an inch to three quarters or an inch in length and about a couple of millimeters wide. Um, you can see that they have a gastrovascular cavity that you can see illustrated in the diagram here. They have eye cups or eye spots that are primitive eye-like organs that can sense light, which allows them to find their way either into the light or to, away from the light, depending on whether they're hunting or whether they're hiding. They have uh, those nervous tissue clusters called ganglia and nerve cords that extend down the length of the body. Their, their entry to their gastrovascular cavity is a mouth at the end of a tube like pharynx. Most of the, when the, when the uh, worms are not feeding, this tube, the pharynx, is inside the body. There's a little opening here and it just extends in. And when they're eating, they extend the tube out and the mouth kind of acts like a little suction cup to bring food in. Platyhelminthes are bilaterally symmetrical like we are. If you cut them in half lengthwise, they have more or less mirror image right and left halves. An interesting thing about planaria is if you cut their head in half, um, they'll actually grow, each part of the head will actually grow another part, and so you'll end up with a planarian that has two heads. Um, they're really interesting little animals and interesting to watch them feed and swim around and avoid what they're trying to avoid and look for what they're trying to look for. Here you see the mouth extruding from a planarian. This is the ventral surface or the belly surface of the planarian. It must, looks like it's eating some kind of plant material. I'm not sure what that is. Some of the other platyhelminths that you may have heard of are liver flukes, which are parasitic, and they have a very complex life cycle involving multiple hosts like a sheep and, and um, snails and things like that. Another one you may have heard of is a tapeworm. Tapeworms are also parasitic. Now these are exceptions to the ingestion rule of animals, uh, animals that are heterotrophic and ingest their food because they don't really ingest their food. They don't have a digestive system because these are intestinal parasites. They have a scolex, a head region here with little hooks on the end and they burrow into the, the wall of the um, intestine and then just absorb nutrients from the host. Each one of these little sections here in the body is called a proglottid and contains um, reproductive organs which can uh, basically break off and, and be full of little eggs that can be that can grow into new tapeworms. Here's a close-up view of the scolex with its barb-like hooks that can burrow in and stay in the in the uh, 
in the digestive wall, in the in the intestinal wall, and then these are areas that can be that can help suction onto the wall as well, and then the proglottids. Reprodu uh, have reproductive organs in them and become just basically a sack of eggs that can grow into new tapeworms. Really not real pleasant animals. The next most complex group is the phylum nematoda or the roundworms. You've heard of heartworms before in terms of dogs um, and heartworms are a type of nematode. Some nematodes are parasites, a lot of them are parasites, but some are free living. Some live in the soil and help aerate the soil and so forth. This is a typical planarian here, um, probably a soil type, uh, I mean a nematode. Nematodes are pseudocoelomates. They have that partial body cavity that forms between the mesoderm and the endoderm, uh, but not a true body cavity. They do have a complete digestive system uh, with a mouth and an anus, in other words, an uninterrupted tube that goes all the way through the body. And this is an advantage to animals that have a complete digestive system because it allows you to eat again before you fully digested what you ate before. In terms of animals like planaria and cnidaria that have a gastrovascular cavity, they can't eat another meal until they get rid of the waste from the previous one. But a uh, complete digestive system allows, allows the animal to continue eating there. Uh, nematodes do not have a circulatory system. The pseudocoelum actually is responsible for distributing the nutrients and oxygen throughout the body. Most nematodes are dioecious, meaning they have two sexes. If you have only one sex, you're hermaphroditic or monoecious, this, which is M-O-N-O-E-C-I-O-U-S, okay? But most nematodes are dioecious. They also have a protective covering called a cuticle. The cuticle it consists of multiple layers of dead cells or dead, yeah, dead material that keeps the worm from drying out or, or dissolving if it's a parasite. Uh, nematodes that you may have heard of include hookworms, which we see over here on the left. This is an intestinal parasite of mammals. Humans can get these, dogs, cats, horses, cows, goats, pigs, um, and sheep. The larvae can actually move through the skin of your feet, uh, so be careful where you're walking barefooted. These cause anemia due to blood loss. Some of them um, can also make you lose a lot of weight as a, as a result of absorbing your nutrients. Heartworms, of course, are the ones we think of most often when we think about nematodes because they are uh, something that's a real danger to our dogs and, cat, and sometimes cats as well. Um, they, the worms basically fill up the heart of the canine and block off the, uh, the atria or the ventricles or the aorta so that, um, so that the host can't transport blood anymore. They typically are transmitted by mosquitoes, so if you have a dog or cat that spends most or all of its time out of doors, you should have the dog or you should have your pet on heartworm preventative. However, be careful. Uh, don't start giving the heartworm preventative until you have the the uh, pet tested by the veterinarian to make sure they're not already infested with heartworms because if they're already infected, then giving them the heartworm uh, preventative medication can actually kill them. They need to be treated for heartworms first uh, if they have them before you can put them on the preventative. 